Hey, and welcome back to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh, and in this tutorial, we're going to be continuing with our advert project. So in our previous one, we created our set scan from our on-set data. So now we're going to go through and we're just going to do some layout on it. We're going to make a low-res geometry, and we're going to make sure it's orientated and scaled in the correct way. Um, because when you create these scans and they come out, they kind of come in the funky, funky angle and a bit of maybe not the scales right. So we need to check that as well. So we're going to load in our scan, we're going to do some really basic modeling around it, and we'll probably bring it back into um, uh, Agisoft and reproject the textures. But yeah, hopefully you guys have been enjoying this tutorial, uh, this tutorial series. It's probably the longest ever in existence, um, <laughs> but we're, we're getting there. Um, it's, the, it's the entire pipeline of a VFX shot, so it's not, it's not a quick turnaround. So. Yeah, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Um, and yeah, let's get going with the layout. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I've opened up Maya, and you don't have to use Maya, you can be using any 3D software you want. Um, Blender, Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Houdini, um, whatever other many 3D softwares there are. Um, I'm gonna use Maya because it's just an industry standard. Everywhere uses Maya and um, most pipelines are built off it anyway, so it's um, even though most people don't want to learn it, it's probably a very important piece of software to learn. But anyway, so we're going to be doing this layout. And uh, first thing we're going to do is just import in our scan that we created. So I'm just going to go File, Import, and I'm just going to navigate to where we exported out our set scan. So it's our O2 set scan, and I'm going to import, and it's not that heavy. But um, it should it might take a little bit of time to load in. Cool. So you can see it's loaded in. Let's just remove our grid. And if we go to shading, hardware texting, hardware texturing, we can see our uh, diffuse map. So we can see that it's just come in and it's kind of crazy angle, not really much reference to scale. So in this, we need to sort of fix this basically, because if we did our cameras to that, everything's going to be mental and it's not going to really work. So the first thing that I'll probably always do is just make sure it's aligned to the origin and level it out. So you can just select this by moving it around, but I find the easiest way to do this is just create a plane, scale it up. hold V and just snap it to like a flat part or the flattest part you think is flat basically. And now I'm just going to press E and rotate this round until the plane is relatively, so I'm just going to change my orientation to object. And I'm just going to align my grid so it's sort of sensible to this actual building and the ground. Obviously this ground's not going to be like 100% flat, but um, we can probably get it fairly close. Or enough that's good enough for us, basically. And I think that's probably fairly reasonable. So, we've got this uh, lined up. Let's actually see. if we can get this any better. That might just be a bit of toshi geo, but I think that's pretty good. Most of it's covered here. So I've lined this up. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to select my set scan and hold middle mouse click and drop it under here. We can select it and press P because all we've done is parented it under the plane. I'm just going to select the plane. And before I zero this out, I need to press S because I need to remember this position. This position and wherever it is, I need to remember it because when I remodel it and then put my stuff, uh, reproject my textures, it needs to go back into Azure Soft at this angle. So I press S to save this key. Now on the second key, I'm just gonna select all my translations and rotations and press zero and press S again. So if I go show, turn off my selection highlighting, if I press uh, lower than and greater than to snap between the keys, 
I can see that I've, I've retained my original position and now I've also got the position where it's super clean, it's at the origin and it'll be really easy to work with. So once I've done this, the second thing that I want to do is try and get the scale as close as possible. So I forgot my tape measure. Um, I don't know where it was, it should have been in my bag. But I always, whenever I do this, I always take reference image, something like this, something that's always in the shot, because I know exactly how big this is, and I can use this as a scale reference. So this Macbeth chart is the size of an A4 piece of paper. So if I go to my polymodeling, create a plane. Where is it? It's going to bring this up. And at the moment, it's one centimetre by one centimetre. We can see clearly see that this is a really small. So I'm just going to put in the size of A4 paper. So that's going to be 21 centimetres by 29.7, I think. 29.7 centimetres. So that should be A4 size. Make sure you're in centimetres units as well. Uh, not millimetres or inches. But if you want to check, just go to your Windows, Settings, Preferences and Preferences. You just go to your Settings and we're in centimetres. Cool, so that's 21 centimetres by 29.7, which should be A4 size. So now I'm just going to... Uh, what I am going to do is... Gonna rotate this around, and I'm just gonna get my reference, and I'm gonna roughly place this this corner about just off the right of this near the back. So you're probably thinking, what? It's if I probably should have taken measurings. Usually I would. Um, just didn't have my tape measure, and I probably could have done it on my phone. Um, it's just in a a bit of a rush. It's a uh, it can be quite tricky when you're doing this all doing the whole lot by yourself but um, there's always a will and the way to find out and that's why I always put my Macbeth chart in there because I know how big that is so I've put this pivot point here so I can just roughly line it up approximately where it was on the bench and what I can also do because the, the Resolution texture, res if I get shading, uh, flat shade, or I go renderer viewport, then just max that out to 8192, reload all textures. And now we have a better resolution on our textures, although we can't really see much here. But we can see now that we've pretty much got this placed in. Uh, in a correct place, so it's just off that first uh, beam. Cool, so you're probably thinking, why have I done this? So now I'm going to select my plane, and I'm just going to scale this. Um, I'm actually going to group this first, because I want to keep this offset and that offset. So I'm just going to group this and change the pivot by pressing insert. I'm changing the, the pivot of the group, not the plane. Cool. Press insert again. So I'm going to press R for scale. Now I'm just going to scale this up until, obviously this is a very sort of rough way of scaling things, but we can get into a pretty, a pretty good range of the correct scale very quickly. Cool, so we're just going to look at this again. 
So we can see this mark on the bench is here. This weird little log thing and this mark here. So we actually might need to pull it over a little bit closer. So that's not a problem. Just so we can get it as accurate as possible. It's, uh, and I feel, let me scale this up just a tiny bit. Just get it down, sorry, just a tiny bit. I think we've got a pretty good scale of reference here. If I can change the size of that. No, apparently not. There we go. Can I grab it? No. No, it's gone. Cool. <laughs> so what I want to do is shift P this out. Press S so it remembers those keys on that one so we've got scale of quite a large amount and then if we go less than it should go back to the original scale so we've got our initial pose of what came out of uh, Agisoft then on our second keyframe is our rescaled and our, our repositioned uh, geometry which is all nice and in the right place and in the right scale so I'm just going to rename this to uh, ref plane And what I can do on my second frame, I can just press Shift P to remove that. Then in here, I'm just going to select all my translations and rotations and lock it. So now I can't change any of that. If I go between my two keys, I can't, but you see that the transforms are staying there. So I can now hide that. I can't hide that because I've locked it, but I can put it in a group. Just call this a uh, ref uh, agit soft because you can't call it the same name and we'll hide it. Cool. So now we've done this, we've got our set scan. So we can do this lots of different ways. We can use, we can decimate it, we could use quad draw. Um, so I think probably what I'll do with this for now is usually I'd probably just make some low res geo for this, but because um, because it's kind of not very high res detail, if I start modeling around this, um, I could be wasting a lot of time, stuff I don't actually need. So I'm going to leave this as it is, and if I... When I start doing the match move, then I'll have much better representation of where I want to model stuff into, because then I'll be able to align it to the, the, the image sequence. So all I really need to do now is sort of clean this up. So we've got our group here, which we'll keep, and we'll save it into our... We'll save our... Layout O2. And all I'm going to do is because we've got this group here, no, we've this. Where is our ref plane? Cool. So we've still got our ref plane here. So we'll keep that and we'll just save that in here. But um, what we're going to do is just uh, freeze the transforms on the mesh. So now. You can't see that I've got it selected, but I've got selection highlighted off. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So I've got my mesh, my scan mesh. And I've just, you can select this little snowflake here and it freezes out all the transforms. Or you can go edit, oh sorry, modify freeze transformations. I just want to remove the history on it. There shouldn't be any history on it anyway. And I can center the transforms, but ideally what I want to do is go to modify and reset transformations. So the difference between this is, if I just turn my selection highlight off again. So this one is center transform. So this is going to create the manipulator as most center of the mesh. But for so, so, so to keep it nice and clean, I want to make sure that my uh, manipulator is always at the origin for something like this. So I'm gonna go to modify and reset transformations. So now my, uh, Manipulator is at the origin. And I have just noticed that actually 
we are a little bit low. So I will just actually let's undo that. So yeah, sorry about that. Make sure you undo that. I'm just going to create another plane. It's not a huge, it's not a deal breaker to have it that low down. I think it's just where we've had, but um, I am going to unlock my reference plane. I'm going to put my What's happened here? Ah, it's hidden, sorry. Let's hide this plane, sorry, I'm making things confusing. So I'm gonna put that back under my reference plane. So now when I skip between the, the, the keyframes here, it goes back to my original Azure Soft position. But all I wanna do is just, um, if I unhide that plane, Gonna make adjustments to my reference plane and just bring this up so we're at least on the ground, something a bit more sensible. And I'm just gonna press S there now. So now if I switch between my keys, it, it saves both the positions. Cool. So I'm just gonna press Shift P on that. I'm just gonna save that again, just so it remembers. I'm just gonna overwrite that. I'm just going to hide all this stuff. So now our scan is pretty much all done. We just need to go through and freeze the transforms so it's all zeroed out. Delete any history. And we go modify and reset transformations. So you'll notice on here as well that this also has a... Um, to make it really clean, we've, we've actually got a namespace on this as well. So we'll remove that. So we go to Windows general editors, namespace editor. And you can see where it's just been imported. And we can delete both of those and merge with root and do it again. So now that's removed the namespaces that it holds and now it's just reduced it down to what it was. So I'm just gonna rename this correctly now. So I'll just call this O2 set scan. Uh, mesh. Cool, and yeah, we're pretty much done. Uh, I would go through and re to apologize this, but for this sort of for what our shot is actually is, it's probably not super necessary. And we'll we'll go through and maybe do that as we do the the cameras, because we'll just have a better representation of it. So what I am going to do now is just going to export this out. So I'm going to export selection. And I'm going to start, I have made it a little bit more, uh, so let's again, onset. So I'm going to go into my onset and I'm going to call this a new folder layout. So this is going to be all my sort of data stuff. I'm just going to call this O2 set scan layout. VO1. And that's going to export everything that we need for the match move. So yeah, we're pretty much done. So our next step would be to let's just do the HDRIs as well. We may as well as we're processing some of the data. We'll go through and process the, the HDRIs. That's another a quick thing to do. So um yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um yeah, and uh, see you in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help. And uh, thanks for watching.